All right. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's right. You're going to have to bear with me looking like the old man pastor today because I couldn't find my cool guy safety reading glasses. We're going to start in Exodus chapter 17. But while you're going there, you'll recall in your head, I think we talked about this last week, John 3.16. For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoso believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Have that in the back of your mind while we're doing this first part of the sermon. Exodus chapter 17. All the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of Yahweh and pitched camped in Rephidim and there was no water for the people to drink. First of all, it says the wilderness of sin. Anybody know what that means, sin? Then? What? No, because it's not the word sin in English. It's, it's a word that's translated. It's the the bush, the wilderness of the bush. You're going to find out why it was called that later on today. So they're in this place, the wilderness of the bush, and they're thirsty. They're parched. They got nothing to drink. And what do the people do? Verse 2, therefore the people did chide with Moses. Anybody have a different word than chide? Strode. 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 Murmuring. They start murmuring, and they said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do you tempt Yahweh? How are they tempting Yahweh if they're chiding with Moses, if they're murmuring with Moses? He's the messenger of Yahweh's son. Because Yahweh put Moses in charge. And here they are going against the guy that led them out of Mitzrayim, led them out of Egypt. You think Moses is thirsty too? He's probably thirsty too. Do you think Moses is trying to figure out how they're going to get water? They are. It's not like he's saying, everybody give me the last year water so I can have water, right? And he's saying, hey, you're tempting Yah. You're going against him because you're going against me. And the people thirsted there for water and the people murmured against Moshe. And said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? Why did you free us from bondage? Why did you take us out from the harsh toil, the bitter, what, you know, what do we eat? Bitter herbs, you know, for the terrible toil. Why did you save us from all that and bring us out here? Are, are you trying to kill us, our children and our animals because we have no water? Now, isn't it interesting? Moshe's in charge. He's leading this expedition. There's a lot of people, right? Is it necessarily only Moses' job to find water? We have thousands and thousands of people here. It, I'll say this, though. The leader is responsible. We say in the military, the leader is responsible for everything his unit does and fails to do. The buck has to stop with somebody. So if Israel has no water, it is kind of up to Moshe to figure out how he's going to get water. Now, it may not be him personally. He could say, Brother Cody, take a party out and go scout for water or something like that. But uh, the way they're approaching him is not good. And so Moshe is a little bit upset by this, and he cries unto Yahweh. And he says, what shall I do unto this people? They'd be almost ready to stone me. Father, you put me in charge of these people. I'm doing the best I can do, but they are so hot that they're getting ready to throw rocks at me and kill me. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel and your rod wherewith you smotest the river to make the river open up. Take it in thine hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there. I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moshe did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. 
Does anybody have a word for Horeb? Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb. Turn, if you will, keep your finger here. We're coming back. Go back to chapter 3 of Exodus, verse 1. Horeb. Now Moshe kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert, and he came upon the mountain of Elohim, even to Horeb. And an angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a what? Bush. bush. The wilderness of sin is the wilderness of what? The bush. bush. Out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. So right here is kind of where it all started for Moshe, right? In Horeb and the wilderness of sin. And now here we are. You can flip back in 17. He's back there. The people are thirsty. They're going crazy a little bit. And uh, there he is. The father tells him to go. Where were we? Verse 6. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock. Thou shalt what the rock? Smite it. Boom! Smack that rock with your stick. And there shall come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moshe did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah. Anybody have a different words? It means temptation and strife. Because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted Yahweh saying, Is Yahweh among us or not? They doubted Yah. They doubted being the chosen people, and so they named that place Temptation and Strife. Now, having read that, kind of understand what's going on there, where it was kind of located, what the significance of it was, let's go to a part of today's Torah portion, which is in Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. Part of this week's store portion. Numbers 20, we're going to start in verse 1. It's about 40 years into their journey in the wilderness is where we're reading now. So what happened was well before. Now we're about 40 years into it, almost to the time of the end of their travelings and getting ready to go into the promised land. And then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of sin. It's the same place. In the first month. So what what feast day do we have in the first month? It's Passover. So 40 years almost to the day, right? Because they left on Passover. And the people abode in Kadesh. And Miriam died there and was buried there. Now Kadesh is an interesting place, and we're not going to do too deep of a dive into it. But the word Kadesh comes from the same root word as Kadosh. Anybody know what Kadosh means? Holy. Holy, set apart, sanctified, sanctuary, uh, saint. Um, there's other words. All of that, set apart. And so that's what this place is referred to as. That's where they are. And Miriam died there and was buried there. Who's Miriam? Moses' sister. Moses' sister. This is a rhetorical question, but I want you to think about it. What do we know about Moses' sister? We're going to find out a little bit today. Miriam. Let's go to Exodus chapter 15. Keep your finger here. We're coming back. We're going to spend some time in Numbers 20. But go to Exodus 15. I think we're going to pick up around verse 20. I'll get to Exodus 8. Oh, I think I've already there. All right. Exodus 15, verse 20. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. So what's Miriam? She's a prophetess. 
she's referred to as such here in the word. So she's automatically a little bit more than Moses's sister, Aaron's sister, right? She's a prophetess. Now, prophetess doesn't mean, uh, you know, it, it seems to me, what was it? We passed a store the other day that was a metaphysical. Metaphysical therapy? Metaphysical. You know, we'll heal you with crystals and incantations or something. I said, what? So it's just like a witch shop or something? But we were driving, so we didn't stop. But you know that when you say prophetess, in the world today, that sounds kind of like that, right? Like some kind of witchy woman or something. But it's not. I mean, we're, we're going to find out. She is merely... She speaks the words of Yah. That could be in future, prophesying that something is going to come true. It could be she's just speaking the words of Yah. We're going to find out that she did. Um, so not only is she the sister of arguably the two most important men in Israel right now, are Moshe the leader and Aaron the priest, the high priest. Those are probably the two most you know ranking people, if you want to put it in the hierarchy. Not only is she their sister, uh, she's a prophetess of Yah. And look at this. We just read it. Let me find it. Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel, like a little tambourine thing. And all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. So she's a leader, right? The women are doing what she's doing. They're following her example. And so now this puts the house of Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, they're kind of like the power family. If you think about it, right? The women are all following Miriam. Moshe's leading the people, and Aaron is, is doing the duties as, as the high priest. Let's keep going. Hold on. Exodus 15, 20. I'm sorry, what? We were in 21. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Miriam, that's... Yeah, Mary Manson is saying, uh, I'm looking for something else. Okay, so Miriam showered, said, answered them, Sing ye unto Yahweh, for he has triumphed gloriously, and the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. So Moshe brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days into the wilderness, and what did they find no of? They found no water. And when they came to Mara. They could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. And therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And what do the people do? Verse 24, the people murmured against Moshe, saying, what shall we drink? And he cried unto Yahweh, and Yahweh showed him a tree, which when he had cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. And there he made them a statute and an ordinance. So we're talking about water again. Now, granted, they're in the wilderness, and the wilderness in this part of the world is mostly desert, and so water, of course, would be an important thing. But I found it interesting that as I was just taking the journey, getting this sermon ready, we just keep coming into water, or lack thereof. And then when the people don't have it, they murmur. We're thirsty. What are you going to do? It's your fault. What, did you bring us out here to die? And it's like, I could just feel for Moshe, the leader, going, guys, I'm trying to. You know, I need water, too. Right? As a matter of fact, I'm older than most of you. And he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them, he tested them, and this is important, 26, and he said, if, circle the if, thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of Yahweh the Elohim, and will do which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, that's a lot of ifs, Right? If you do this and this and this and this, I will put none of these diseases upon me, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am Yahweh that heals you. Do you think that applies today? Mm -hmm. I tell you it does. I tell you it does, but there's a big if there. You should circle this verse and look at it later. And they came to Elam, where there were 12 wells of water and three score and 10 palm trees. And they encamp there by the waters. And so just there while I was looking into who Miriam was, we get in the water. But we're not done looking at Miriam. Let's go to a book you haven't been to for a while. Micah. Where is Micah? Everybody flips to the front of their book, finds the table. It's between Noah and, like, I mean, Jonah and Nahum. 
I was actually going to, th- I thought I was going to do a sermon. Did y'all hear about that guy that was swallowed up by the whale recently? Mm-hmm. I thought I was going to do a sermon on that and kind of segue into Jonah. And then I, the Lord said, nope, this is what we're going to talk about instead. So um, Micah chapter 6. We're talking about Miriam. Micah chapter 6. Uh, I guess we'll go to 4. <clears throat> I'll just start in verse 1. Hear ye now what Yahweh saith, Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Hear, O ye mountains, Yahweh's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth. For Yahweh has a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. O my people, what have I done unto thee? This is Yah talking to Israel. He's, he's ticked at Israel. That the people that he chose, and well, here we go. What have I done to thee, and wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. Go ahead. What you got against me, Israel, is what Yah is saying to them. For I brought you up out of the land of Mitzrayim, and I redeemed you out of the house of servants, and I sent before thee Moshe, Aaron, and Miriam. Ooh. That puts Miriam in pretty high stead, if you ask me. This is like, hey guys, I'm Yah. I chose you. I brought you out of the house of bondage. I brought you out of misery. I led you with Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. We don't hear this a lot. We don't hear stories, word of women doing great things, women being important. He's holding up Miriam on the same level, if you will, as Moses, the leader, Aaron, the high priest, and now Miriam, the prophetess. And he's lifting them up and saying, look, I even gave you these three awesome people to lead you. Oh, my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, consulted and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that you may know the righteousness of Yahweh. And so here he is lifting her up. They're all important. Moshe, uh, Aaron, and Miriam. All right, I just wanted to, we'll go back now to Numbers chapter 20, but it's just that little verse. The people abode in Kadesh, set apart holy, and Miriam died there and was buried there, buried there. And it just kind of goes on. Well, Miriam was an important person to Israel. There's thought that she was the main teacher of the women other than the husbands, that she was the one that was explaining the law, Torah, uh, to them while the men were out doing manly things. All right. Miriam died there and was buried there. Verse 2, and there was no water, here we are again, for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moshe and against Aaron. Well, they can't do it against her because she's dead. Think about Moshe's position, because I do. Miriam is like his right or left-hand person. He's got Aaron, he's got Miriam. Miriam just died. How do you think Moshe's feeling? I mean, he's a man, right? He's human. His sister, not just his sister, but someone who's been very important in leading Israel with him has just died and they just buried her and here come the people. And I can just see him. I mean, I'm putting some of myself into it, but it's like, all right, Miriam just died and now you're bringing this? To me so can because I've always said I think Moshe had anger issues to begin with I think 